ready for this? Welcome everybody. Whoa, we got people from all over here today. We got Arkansas, California, Ohio, that was moved, Louisiana, Dayton, Ohio, Arlen in the house. Yay. We got some Georgia and Pennsylvania out there too. Absolutely. We are so glad you all are here. Even Washington State is being represented today. We got Williams, Williamsport in the house. And once again, we are so glad that you are here. Please feel free to tell us where you are from in the Zoom chat today. Nebraska in the house. And then hey. VA. Wouldn't be a party without y'all. <laughs> Las Vegas. Oh, hey, from here on. Woohoo! Thank you so Woo much for being part of this roll call today. Anna, you see all these folks from Texas. I see my today. friends from Texas. Woohoo! <laughs> We're going to get started in just a few more seconds. We just want to give everybody a chance to join us today. Yes, Indiana in the house. Yes, Ms. Miranda, represent. All right, everyone, we are so glad that you are here today for our kickoff 2021 with PBS Rewards Training Camp. We really wanted to start off making it very clear that we want you to be pumped up about starting your year off for the win with PBIS Rewards. And so we wanna thank everybody for being here today. And we also want to thank you for telling us a little bit about yourself in the chat. And so since you all told us about yourselves, it would only be fair for us to tell you a little bit about ourselves as well. So hello, everybody. My name is India Williams, and I'm one of the professional development educators here at PBS Rewards. This is year 25 plus in education, and this is definitely one of the best chapters of my life. I definitely feel like I'm winning because I'm playing with a team of nothing but MVP all-stars, including Terrell Brown, Anna Michaels, and Adam Efrit. So if you all wanna tell everybody a little bit about yourself as well, and then we'll get into today's training. Yeah, and there's no problem, India. Thank you for that warm welcome. We really do appreciate it. My name is Terrell Brown, um, resident here in Indianapolis, Indiana, hometown of Richmond, Indiana. So Ms. Griffin from Dayton, Ohio, I'm just your next door neighbor originally. Um, I have been in education for the past 10 years, and just recently for the past four, I was a uh, eighth grade U.S. history teacher here in Indianapolis, Indiana. 
and joining the PBIS Rewards team is one of the best chapters in my life next to uh, marrying my wife and having my, my awesome children. Um, this is so awesome. And it's, I really do come um, every day working with this team with a smile. Uh, they also call me the golden boy. And here's the reason why. Um, I'm not afraid, I'm not ashamed to say this, but I'm an avid fan for the Golden Girls. Yes, I was born in 1986, so I watched the Golden Girls all the time. That is my show. Those are some lovely ladies. And I thank Hulu for getting it on that, <laughs> Hulu for allowing me to watch that every single night. So that's just a little bit about me. Um, now I want to pass it over to Anna Michael. Hi, everybody. We're so glad that you're joining us today. Um, I am coming to you from Fort Worth, Texas. And I'm just like Terrell said, um, this has been such a great part of my journey in education. Um, I was a sixth grade teacher and I taught science and social studies, only one year of math. That was not my favorite. So kudos to math teachers because it was not my jam. Um, but then I became an administrator at the campus I was a teacher at. And then when that campus closed to become a career and technical high school, um, I helped to open a kinder through fourth grade campus as an administrator. But um, this has just been so fantastic working at PBS Rewards. And we are just so thrilled that you're here and to offer you this course today. We have really been working hard to make it really strong for you and really start your 21-22 school year off right with PBS Rewards. So we're just super excited to be here. So I am going to kick it over to Adam. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Eford. Uh, I joined Terrell here a few months ago with PBIS Rewards, and it was super exciting to kind of get on board with these ladies. Um, I also have uh, about 12 years of educational experience between teaching and administrative duties. Um, so it's been, it has been a completely different experience working here with PBIS Rewards, and I'm so excited to continue my journey here. So thank you guys for being here today. And we, um, again, if you have any questions for us throughout this training, feel free to let us know. And we're excited to have you here. Now, here's some expectations that we do have for um, our training for today. Uh, we have three expectations. Just as we want our students to follow expectations, we do ask the same for everyone else. And those expectations are be respectful, be responsible, and also be safe. Mm -hmm. So please, while we are presenting, make sure that your uh, microphone is on mute. But please don't feel afraid to go ahead and unmute yourself and ask a question. Believe us, guys, we want you to ask those questions um, so we can make sure that everybody gets all the information that they need. Uh, for being responsible, please make sure that the PBIS reward system or our content is the only thing that's up. If you um, have your camera off, go ahead and turn it on. But if you don't want it on, you can keep it off. That's perfectly fine. Um, make sure that all your other devices are silenced, but we, tr we truly understand if you need to go take that phone call or answer that quick text message or anything like that, please feel free to go ahead and do that. Um, and also make sure that you're sharing relevant information and ideas. Once again, stay engaged. Feel free to use those nonverbal feedback reactions with the Zoom if you're comfortable with those. And once again, please do not feel afraid of asking us questions because we are exact this is what we do. Thank you, Adam, for the thumbs up. We are here to help out everyone, especially getting off to a great start for the school year. Now, once again, as we are going, um, and you have four of us here, so we're, we're all ready to go. If you have any questions or anything, please put those in the sidelines. That's just the Zoom chat. So any questions, concerns, or you're wondering about anything, anything Please throw that in the sidelines and we'll definitely get to those so we can get all those questions answered. Like I said, we are really good at seeing the chat. You know, there's, there's four of us, so we're definitely going to see that and get everything answered. And here is the game plan for today. Here's the X's and O's. So we're going to go through our pregame with all of the uh, introductions and you're going to meet the coaches, which we have. Then we're going to get into our first quarter. That's our foundations. Then we're going to get into the second quarter. That is logging in and actually how to reward students using the PBIS reward system. Third quarter is redeeming. So once we are, once we know how to give out the points, we're going to see how the students can redeem those points. And then we're going to look at different interventions. 
like the social emotional learning or the cell, how that can be done by the students and also the staff. And then also the check in, check in, uh, check in, check out with the teacher versus the coach and also documentation and how that can actually be saved in the PBIS award system. And then at the at the end, we're going to do a post game wrap up and we will make sure that everybody gets some great resources at the end of this training. All right, so let's get started with PBIS Foundations. Um, and so this is our first quarter and throughout this quarter, we're gonna just be discussing, as I said, the foundations for PBIS. And these are pretty much the most important components of your program, really setting it, setting it out there and making sure it's very easy to understand for your students and your staff is of the utmost importance. So let's tackle first and foremost, the what, the why, and the how of PBIS rewards. Um, so let's look at PBIS as an acronym and exactly what does that acronym stand for? So PBIS is Positive Behavior Interventions and Supports. So remember that the purpose of us using this program in our school is to encourage positive behaviors from our students and as, as well as teaching and promoting positive behaviors across our campus. And in doing so, we hope that this creates a more positive school climate for your staff and your students to enjoy. There are some big features and elements of PBIS that are, we find the most important amongst our team here. Um, so we're going to quickly run through these. Obviously, you have your PBIS team. It is important that you have representation for your PBIS team um, from each grade level at your school. Just make sure you have that representation there. Um, also, student representation is becoming more and more popular as well as parent parental support there as well. You have your school wide expectations, which should be put into a matrix and posted around your campus. Then we have behavioral instruction and lesson plans that should be taking place, and that can be easily embedded in your classroom systems and routines. You have a system for recognition, so we're recognizing our students for what they're doing. Um, professional development is set up to ensure that your staff understands how to use PBIS rewards to improve the fidelity of that program. In addition, we have staff buy-in consistent implementation, evaluating and reporting, and a lot of that can be done right in the system. You have your discipline procedures that should be easily outlined, and then um, it should coincide with the ARS that you have set up. Your discipline procedures, as I said, um, that, that is an additional component to our program, um, but again, super helpful. Again, you're also going to look at your data collection and then the student, family, and community involvement you have within PBIS. So when we talk about expectations, a lot of people immediately think about rules, right? Um, but let's look at the difference between a rule and an expectation. A rule is gonna be very authoritative and oftentimes has some kind of negative connotation, like no running, no this, no that. Um, instead of doing that, we can set an expectation, which is a more confident and strong hope um, that you're gonna follow what we want you to do here. <clears throat> so let's look at this next slide. And we're gonna really look at how we have our rules here. No running, don't run, no talk, get to class on time, no social media. It's very negative in its approach, right? So we can always try and say, okay, well, let's positively state these, right? We want it to be simple and specific, and we want it to convey expected behaviors. Um, so let's just kind of look at the, put it in two of these together. We have our rules and our expectations. So instead of saying no talking, I could say use a voice level zero. Instead of saying don't run, I can just say walk on the right side. Instead of saying no social media, we use use technology safely and appropriately. So again, we're just we're using this. We're, we're saying the same thing. It's just the semantics behind that are much more positive in that expectation. And um, it takes away from that negative connotation for our students. All right, and I want to make sure that everyone can hear me okay, just like someone else shared, they were having some issues with their internet, I am as well. So can you give me an actual thumbs up, or just give me a nonverbal thumb up if you can hear me okay. 
That's what I want to see. That's what I want to see. All right. So let's talk a little bit about classroom systems and routines. It's very important, as you know, as Adam just shared, that PBIS is a school-wide initiative. Yet it's very important that at the beginning of the year, you're very clear and explicit about your classroom systems and routines and have them set up for success. There are a few things that you want to think about, and one of them is considering not only having a school matrix, but also having a classroom matrix, yes. And when you're deciding this classroom matrix, you want to think about what does the curriculum look like, and how can we include that in part of the matrix? When do we explicitly teach it? So when do we really want to dedicate important time to really teach these expectations for the classroom? We would say early, and then teach it again and reteach it again as often as necessary to make sure that the students and then even new students joining you know exactly what the expectations are. And then finally, you want to consider how often do we teach it and reteach it? Well, like we just said before, you're going to do it anytime that you notice that the students may be kind of, you know, not hitting those expectations as they were earlier on in the year. That's when you want to reteach it. And also when you have any new students join your classroom, you want to make sure that you reteach it then as well. And when you are putting together that classroom matrix, we also want to make sure that you try to include your students in that process. Have a meeting where you all talk about what is the curriculum and what are the expectations and how best you can meet them through your routines and your system. And as you're getting all of these things put together, not for your students, but with your students, you also want to consider all of these things. You want to define the pieces together and keep them simple. You also want to make sure that you're modeling with clear examples and also non-examples. And we know the students love to be the actors and actresses when you're doing those non-examples. Also make sure that you're practicing multiple examples in the natural settings of the classroom, recess, uh, playground, lunchroom, whatever is applicable. And then also making sure that you supervise, acknowledge, and reteach. And finally, adjust your instruction based upon the progress. And so we just want to make sure that you do keep in mind that although PBIS is a school-wide initiative, you really want to be very thoughtful about the expectations within the classroom. So as Adam talked about those 12 foundational pieces of PBIS, um, the lesson planning is really an important piece because just like we teach things Academically, when students don't understand, we come back and reteach it and we're very explicit about that. We wanna do the same thing with behavior. So that's really what we're gonna focus on here. So really thinking about a template for teaching those lesson plans, we are going to give you a great resource today that we're calling the beginning of year PBS Rewards Playbook. And it is going to have lots of resources for you. And one of the things that will be in there is a link to this document that is a lesson plan template that's very easy to complete with staff members and thinking about how are you going to take time and intentionally teach those lesson plans. So focusing on one expectation each day and the lessons can be short and that's really the best thing is to keep them maybe 10 to 15 minutes and consistent. Many schools have, uh, especially secondary schools are gonna have time set aside where students are gonna be in some kind of homeroom or something similar, this is a great time to teach that. Or if you're in more of an elementary school, if you have that circle time every day, great place for that instruction to happen there. And utilizing those best strategies that we have with academics. So things like a Venn diagram, a T-chart, role-playing, examples and non-examples, going over what those behaviors look like and don't look like. Those are fantastic, writing a story about so taking those exact same best practices and applying them to behavior is a great idea on when you are designing your lesson plans. This is also a great way to get the buy-in from staff because they're going to be involved in the lesson planning process. So once those have been developed, then really working on the scheduling for that. Um, how can we roll that out, especially at the beginning of the year? Sometimes we talk about front-loading more of this information with PBIS 
at the beginning of the year, but you will definitely get that time back as the year progresses because we've done that explicit instruction with students and then we can easily come back and do some monitoring with it. So this is an example of the beginning of the year. Our favorite thing to do is really to start off with a school-wide pep rally or assembly to really get students excited and going over all the expectations and those common locations. And with PBIS rewards, really talking about badges and points. And then you can see each day we are focusing on a different area of our school-wide expectation. So one day for respect, one for responsibility, one for safety. And we talk about those in those specific common areas around our building. And then Friday, we come back together and it is a great idea then to maybe do a raffle and to give um, some item away for those students that have earned points. And that is a great way to also build that excitement and encourage students to earn those points at, and also to encourage our staff members to start giving those points away and building that as part of their daily routine. So I saw a question come up in the chat, but I didn't get a chance to read it. India, what did it say? Something? Well, basically people are so excited already about today's uh, training session. And they're like, can we please get you know today's recording? Can we please get the, uh, the PowerPoint template to be able to use to train our own staff? And so we let them know, absolutely yes. If you have registered for today's session, you will receive a follow-up email that will have a link to today's recording, as well as other resources. Adam also shared a wonderful nugget. Some of you may not have known. You're gonna get a playbook. How can we ask you to not just play, but win without a playbook? So there is a playbook link that's also going to be shared with you, not just in your email, but I think we might be able to get it into your hands before the end of today's training session. So definitely stay with us and we'll make sure you have everything you need to make sure that your staff is set up for the win. Okay, this is our amazing team. I can't say enough about them. All right, so let's talk next with Terrell. Oh, there's a timeout on the field. We're going to have a quick huddle session. Um, so this is what I want everyone to do. Um, hopefully we get 100% uh, participation from everyone. And the main focus is staff buy-in because we know that is a major component of when you're rolling out something new or are you continuing on and making sure that everyone that's on the team is following the same team expectations. So we're going to talk a little bit about that staff buy-in. So this is what I want you guys to do. In the chat, please answer this first question. What are some of your um, wins with staff buy-in? What are some of your wins with your staff buy-in? Go ahead and put those in the chat. We'll give you guys a couple of moments. What are some of your wins? I know we have some people that have some successes with their staff. Maybe if it's not with PBIS, maybe with other initiatives. What is something that you did that really worked well with your staff. Oh, Erica, they like incentives and prizes. Yes, definitely love those incentives and prizes. Teachers, uh, we're seeing- I like what Carlton is stating right now that involving your staff in the decision-making process definitely, definitely brings in a lot more buy-in because they're a part of that process. Awesome. Teacher appreciation points. Those are all great. Now, even though we're talking about wins, unfortunately, there's going to be some hurdles throughout the, the school year or implement, implementation of anything that has been going on. So the next question I want you guys to put in the chat is this. What are some of your hurdles with staff buy-in? Mm. Okay. Time. Time. An extra task. Consistency, Courtney, yes, that's a big concern. Yes. Time, uh, time, time. Uh, <laughs> this is extra time. Yeah. Well, one this more was, thing. Yeah. One more thing so. Incentives. Is there anybody that has budget concerns with their staff too? Try to, uh, yes, Ms. Smith, I see you that's out right. there. Yep. That's all. <laughs> and Courtney, yep. <laughs> Okay, definitely. We can share some resources on that. Technology with veteran teachers. Woo, we speak their language on that one sometimes. We understand. Gift cards, you can't give them. We get it. Yes. Totally understand. So 
Um, I do want to say thank you for everyone participating in this timeout, this huddle session. Hopefully, as you have been seeing, even though there are some hurdles with the staff buy-in, uh, with, with any initiative that you're trying to establish at your school, there are ways to actually win. Um, and what we're going to get into now is the why use PBIS rewards to definitely get that staff buy-in to come in at a higher rate. All right, so let's look Let's look at why we use PBIS rewards. So let's start here um, at the bottom where we talk about it being school-wide. One really good feature of this program is that anyone on your campus is able to reward students and be a part of this process. Um, and so that's that's a super helpful thing as far as in, everyone's talking about this buy-in and that's why I felt like this was a really good time to talk about this. Right now, that is something that you can do with your staff members. Bring them in, make them a part of those decisions, okay? Encourage them, encourage your staff to uh, reward students. And another thing, all grade levels are, are gonna be able to be involved in this. You know, so like if you're at a school and some of us have interesting school um, dynamics there, some of us are K-8, some of us are K-4, um, regardless of what kind of school you have, all grade levels have opportunities here. Um, and you can, you can kind of tailor the system to kind of meet the needs of your school. It will save you time in the long run. Now, maybe you're going to spend a little bit more time talking about procedures and expectations at the beginning of the year, but this will save you much more time later on as it will reduce your office referrals. And in doing so, it's going to increase that instructional time that you have available for your students. Another great feature of this program is that it increases positive relationships. So as your teachers are, are giving points and they're focusing on that positive behavior that's being exhibited by students, then it starts to Im improve the relationships that your teachers have with their students. It might even improve the relationships they have with parents because this system allows for very easy communication between home and school. And finally, with all of this in place, it helps to build a more positive school culture, make your teachers feel happy to be a part of something like this, and it allows your students to again be a part of that buy-in process. All right, can you believe that we already have made it through the first quarter of today's training session? And now it's time for us to, yeah, I like that Martha, woo woo, let's celebrate, yes. We are ready for the second quarter, but we're gonna talk about how you log in to PBIS Rewards, and then also how you can use it to actually acknowledge and reward your students with points. And Adam, the very first thing that he said about why PBIS Rewards is such a great uh, program to help with your PBIS initiatives is that it's school-wide, right? And part of what makes it school-wide is that we have aspects of the system for your staff, which is a web portal and an app, but we also have a web portal and an app for your students, so they can also um, engage with the program. We also have an app for parents, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But right now, let's talk about how you can give your students access to PBIS rewards. Now, we have so many people that say, okay, I've been using the program. I know what it looks like for staff, but I have no clue what it looks like for the students. So we really wanted to make sure that you kind of had an idea of what um, the login pages look like for the students on their web portal and for the students on their app. So you can see even from this screenshot here that there are multiple ways that students can get access to PBIS rewards. Um, there are several single sign-on options such as Google, if you do have the students' Google emails into the PBIS rewards system. You can also use Clever and ClassLink for your students to have that single sign-on to get access. You also can generate um, access codes for the students um, for them to be able to get into the system. Uh, it is very important to us keeping your staff, your students, your families, their information safe and private. And so that's why we have these particular multiple ways that your students can gain access. Now, as we said, it is important that they have authorized access to be able to utilize the system. We already talked about some of those single sign-on options, which again are Google, Clever and ClassLink, but you also can give your students authorization codes to be able to get into the system. And we have a new feature that's come out very recently to where now not only can you generate authorization codes for one individual student, 
you can actually create an off code for a group of students to use, saving that precious classroom instruction time, as well as creating a scanning station for students to come and quickly get information such as point uh, balances. So we really tried to make it easy for you to be able to not only give your students access to the web portal and app, but also to make that access safe and private. All right, I do see a question in this chat, um, but are there resources that will be sent for the staff training? Absolutely. If you have e um, registered for today's training session, we will make sure that in that follow-up email we send, you will have resources for today's uh, session as well as a link to the recording. Great question, Amy. All right, so this is what's really exciting. And we're gonna talk a little bit about this later, but when you're using the system, we have a little saying, if you wanna stay in the loop, stay in the group. And we'll find out more about what that means a little later on in today's training. But those very precious authorization codes to get your students access into the system safely and privately can actually now be generated within the group page. It's very simple to do when you, it's actually a button kind of right there at the top that says off, I believe. Um, and then when you click on that, you have options of being able to uh, generate an individual code or to also uh, get that group code that we were talking about. And the great thing is, is not only can you generate this, you can choose the amount of time that you want this to be active for, okay? You can choose if you want it active for 10 minutes, 30 minutes, four hours, eight hours. Um, yet also you can print this information off so if you wanted to actually print the QR code for the students to scan with their app. So there's a lot of uh, easy things that you can do right there from that groups page, including getting that student authorization code, QR code to help them get into the system safely and privately. All right, we just, we really want to reiterate to you how important it is for you to be able to help your staff, help the students log in. This is the slide, like we said, we will be giving you access to this resource to the PowerPoint um, template that you can uh, then make your own changes to. This might be a page that you want to edit specifically to where you can just leave on the slide exactly the way you want your staff to show your students to log on, okay, if you want them to pretty much just use Clever, pretty much use, you know, ClassLink or Google, you can leave that on there for them to see, okay? We're trying to make it very easy for you and your staff to be able to help the students to get logged in. Um, one of the great things about our PBS reward system is that you can utilize badges and print them for free. Of course, we love being able to print those for everybody. They are a dollar a badge if we make them, but you can also do them for absolutely free. And if there's an Avery label out there, we have a template for you to get that badge put on there or QR code. So in the left-hand side, if you go down to the um, part that says ID badges, It'll bring up all the options for you. And you can also personalize exactly what you want on the badge, including a student picture, their QR code. If you have a barcode that students use, sometimes in the cafeteria and the library, that can also be put on their badge. If you don't wanna print off badges, you can always use this very last one, which is an Avery address label. And this is great to print off and use in the classroom if your students have individual desks that they're going to stay at in most of the day. If you're a self-contained teacher, you can stick that right on their desk. Um, if you're a teacher of older students, maybe they have one-on-one -on -one devices, you can put that right on their device. So these are all great ways to utilize that. And then as the teacher, you have your mobile device that you can use our app and easily scan those badges or those QR codes and um, reward those students points. We have also recently added, if you have your students utilize um, the student portal, they can have a digital badge so that if they lose their badge, they have this option that you can scan this from their mobile phone or whatever device they're using, and then you can reward them points this way as well. So lots of options. So no more reasons to have lost badges. And then just a couple of ideas, like we said, great things to put 
those um, badges or QR codes on those um, binders for students. If you have agenda books, we know that's really common with a lot of schools, those individual desks, and then those devices. So think about what is really gonna work out best for you and your students with those badges. So I see that there's some questions in the chat about customizing the badges. Um, you can customize the layout of the badge and then to match the seating chart when you print them. Right now, when you print them, it kind of looks like this. Um, we, and we'll show you where this is. Um, and it only prints alphabetical right now, but that is a really great idea to be able to move that around. That's definitely something that we could share with our developers. So thanks for that um, suggestion, Kira. All right, is there anything else in the chat that I missed with badges or y'all took care of it? All right, Adam is nodding his head. Okay, y'all are all good, you took care of it, boom. Okay, great. Now that the students have able been to log in, now we're gonna look at the staff access also. So um, I've also put the website into our chat. Um, you can just easily go to www.pbislogin.com um, or your administrator will be sending out, if your staff member, the administrator will also be sending out an email on how to uh, get into the web portal the very first time. It's gonna ask you to type in your email associated, um, if you have Clever or Classlink, um, the email that's associated with that. And then it's going to ask you for the password. The very first password is going to be the default password. And then it's going to prompt you to change your password for you to use um, for the rest of the time. Uh, but once again, if you have Clever or Classlink, all you got to do is click on one of those two, um, and then you'll be able to get in right into the web portal. And then it's going to show you the very uh, main page where you can reward students. Uh, you can see your groups, your activity, the stores, events, Raffles or drawings will be there located with the referrals. If your school does utilize the ARS system, um, the check-in, checking out coach and teacher, um, you can find all of the reports, your students and staff members, and also the ID badges as Anna was just recently talking about. So this is what everything looks like from the web portal. And there, like I said, and this is where you can award one student at a time um, by clicking on the reward student and you can type in their name and you can search for them and then you can um, go ahead and give the point for a student really on the rewards home page but we do say the groups and as Anna said if you want to stay in the loop stay in the group but we're going to talk more about that in just a moment so once you are logged in then if you have your um, cell phone or iPad, whether it's an Android or Apple, you need to authorize yourself to use the staff app. So in the web portal, at the bottom left-hand corner where it says login off codes, you'll click on that, and then you will go to staff off code. Once you have clicked on staff off code, it is going to ask you if you want to create a new staff login code. And all you have to do is hit the plus green plus sign. Once you hit the green plus sign, it's going to ask you, are you authorizing yourself? Or are you going to authorize a, another staff member? You'll just click on authorize myself and you will hit generate code. Once you have generated the code, it's going to show you um, a generate a, a authorization code for you to use in the staff app. Next, you want to go ahead and get that iPhone, Android, iPad, and download the PBIS Rewards Staff app. This is absolutely for free. So every if you're utilizing the app, go ahead and definitely um, download that. And it's going to, once you open it up, it's going to get you into the main page. You still can sign in the staff app with your school, your email, and the password. But if you already have your authorization code, this is a very, very quick process to do. You'll click on where it says, I have an authorization code. And it's going to ask you for the authorization code. So the authorization code that you have from the web portal, you enter in those the, the six um, numbers and the three letters, and then you will hit submit. And then you then 
see your um, app web main page where you can recognize the student. You still can see the groups, those check-in, check-outs, and the notifications that you do have. Any, you can do referrals from your app, message to um, the staff or also to the parents. You can redeem um, rewards from the students and those student purchases. So almost everything that you can do in the web portal, you can also do in the app. But we'll talk about some of the things that you're not able to do um, in the app. So once you have logged in, now it is time for the most important thing, rewarding those students for all the expectations that they're actually meeting. So as I said, and once you're in the web portal or even in the app, on the upper left-hand corner of the web, uh, portal, web portal says reward students. So you just wanna make sure you click on that. Second thing you need to do is search for a student that you wanna give an award to. For this example, we're gonna give a, a point to Blake Atkins. And then you're going to select um, out of your expectation, which point is he going to get um, that for? So for Blake, we're gonna give him a point for being responsible. And there is a, is a comment section that is there. It, it is a maximum of 150 characters. And this, can, this is something that either your admin can have on or off. So if you don't see where it says comment, that means the admin has it off. So you're not gonna be able to put anything in there. But if the comment is there, you can put in a comment and, and for, it says, thanks for helping a classmate at his locker. And it's always good to make sure that you do put a comment in because the student will be able to see that comment and then they will know exactly what they did to get those points. And, and for future, they, if, they, if I know I got the point for doing this, I can do it again and then I can hit that expectation even more. And then lastly, at the bottom right hand where it says reward, that is where you will actually confirm the uh, points given to the student at that point in time. So you'll just hit reward. Same thing, very similar to the app. Um, on the main screen, you'll just hit recognize student. There you'll see your expectations per each student. You can give for respect, responsibility, safety, whatever ways you have. And then you can, if you want to include a comment, you can. Um, a great way for this, let's say that you have a student that has helped out another student at their locker, but you don't know who that student is he or she is not in your class, but they have their badge and their lanyard, you can actually scan their badge and scan that QR code to give them points, even if they're not even in your class. And that's the great thing about PBIS rewards, okay? Or if you do know a student, let's say that you did see someone help out and you do have them in class, but he's down the hallway, you can still search their name and be able to give them points right then and there with the touch of a button. So this is this is an awesome feature. All right, so India gave you a, a little bit of a preview about groups, and this is really our hopefully our biggest takeaway for you here is that the groups is where most staff members are going to spend the majority of their time. So if there's any part that you really remember from today, we really hope that it is about the group screen, because this is where we have put so many features and so many functions of PBIS rewards. It's kind of like a home base. If you need it, it's in the groups page. So that's why India said, if you want to stay in the loop, stay in the groups. So let's talk to you about how teachers and staff members can really utilize this to help them. So in the group screen, you will first select the group that you want to award points to. Most staff members are going to have the groups that will be synced with them. So these are gonna be their classes that are assigned to them with their students, especially if you are a school that uses ClassLink or Clever, these sync overnight. So if you get new students, they'll be right in that class for you. You can also create new, new groups. If you have a after school group that you meet with or group that you are doing tutorials with or that kind of thing. You can even create a group and add student names to it. If you don't have ClassLink or Clever, no worries. The groups are really easy to create. There's a green plus sign. So you just click that and it'll start you creating a group. Once you have your students in a group, it looks just like this. Each student has kind of a card that's there with their name on it. 
Our system even has a capability to upload student pictures that go with it, which is really nice to be able to match the student name and picture. And our favorite thing is that you can select all of your students and you can easily give points to your whole class at one time. If you've ever used paper tickets before, paper money to give to students as incentives, you know how long that takes to pass out. So with a click of a button, boom, you are given points to your whole class. So this, this is a really efficient way to utilize PBS rewards here on the group screen. Each student has a number on their card. You can see here for Charlie, um, it has 36, and that is Charlie's point balance. Sometimes we call it a points backpack, and that is the amount of points that that student has, and they take that with them to every class. So as Charlie goes from my class to Adam's class, they're going to take those points with them. If they earn new points, they're going to be added to the backpack. And that number will increase if they spend points on something, they buy something from us and utilize those points, it'll be pulled off of that number and the number, of course, will decrease. So um, that's a great way to talk to students about that number. It does not indicate whether somebody has great behavior or behavior that needs improvement because everybody's going to spend their points differently. So for a lot of teachers, this is what's up on their screen in their classroom. And that number can is optional, you don't have to have that on there as well in our system. So next, we really love this next one, which is the random button. This is a way that you can have our system select a student at random to run an errand for you, answer a question, or even to uh, make groups of students. So no longer do you have to worry about your students saying, oh, you always pick so-and-so. No, nope, PBS Rewards is picking it, so it's always equitable because everybody has the same option in there. Um, for a lot of us teachers that have been around for a little while, this replaces that can of sticks I used to have on my desk, and I'd pick students' names off of the sticks. You could throw that in the trash anymore, so we really, really like that random button. The next one that we like is the toggle presence button. Oh, Erica, I see your question. You were right there with us. Um, that is how you can mark a student that's not present in your class. Now, please know this has nothing to do with attendance. PBS Rewards does not take attendance. Um, this is for students that are present or not present in your class. So let's say for Logan that's here, if Logan is not present in my class because he went to a dentist appointment, I click his card and click toggle presence and it turns his card gray. And then when I go to give points to my whole class, Logan will not receive points because he's not present. However, we know kids kind of boomerang right back to class. So when he shows up back to class, all I have to do is click on his card, hit toggle presence, and he's active again. Um, this only pertains to my class. When this group of kids goes to another teacher's class, it doesn't affect them at all. So that next teacher would have to mark that student that they're not present if that happens in their class. So that's a really great option. And then finally is at the very top, this is our redeeming menu. You can access all of the different ways to redeem points through your school store events and raffles and then your own personal teacher store events and raffles right here from the groups page. So um, like we said, if you want to stay in the loop, stay in the groups because there's so many things that can happen right here. On your mobile device, groups also has so much functionality. You can select that in the groups and then any groups that are synced with you and that you have favorited. So the, that can be a group. Maybe if I'm helping Terrell with one of his afternoon groups and I favorite that group, and I click this little orange star that's next to it, then that will appear on my phone. And that's a group I can easily give points to. And I have all that same functionality. I can give points to everybody in the class, individual students or groups of students. I also can utilize that random button on the app. So a great way to do that, giving or give those points away to students on the go right there from your mobile device. Oh, how do teachers will make a group? Um, yes, I we can do that, Erica. Um, in the system, it's it has a green plus sign on the groups page. As soon as you click on that, you click that green plus sign, 
and it'll start a, um, a new group for you. you name it, you add the students and it's ready to roll. Before we start the third quarter, are there any other questions so far? Let's say this is our little halftime break right now. We'll take a little halftime intermission. Okay, um, well, I do have a question for us all and I, I'm gonna put this in the chat and I want everyone to um, answer this. And it's this, since we just got done talking about the groups and rewarding, what are some reasons why your staff have rewarded students or may reward students? Okay, so what are those, some of those ways that uh, for the schools that have PBIS reward system and this is more of a refresher um, or this is for the schools that's kind of thinking about getting some ideas out there, all right? Um, what are some of the ways or some of the reasons why um, your school have rewarded students? All right, we have... Right, let's see what we got here. Being helpful and kind to another student, um, following those expectations, participation, um, I see including others. Um, as a whole class, every student in class is on time. All right, that's great. Talking in a positive manner, helping more of helping others. Great. In participation. Yes, I know from my uh, middle school days when we have those um, classroom discussions, it can be crickets. But if you're adding those in um, as some points for just participating, you know, that is something that the students will definitely go for. And Ms. Nichols, she gets extra PBIS points because she gave the PBS best practice answer when they align with the matrix, <laughs> right, Adam? <laughs> yes. You know, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Halftime is over. All right. Let's go ahead. And we're almost home. So we're going to start the third quarter. All right, everyone. So let's start talking about the third quarter. And that's redeeming, right? Um, so um, in, this, in this category, we're going to discuss uh, stores, events, and raffles and drawings. Now, um, of these, my favorite is probably the store. Um, so we're going to start talking about that first. So let me first be very clear that there are two different parts, to, there are two different components to the store. You have a school store, and then you have your my store, right? Um, and just just so you know, uh, coming soon, you're going to be able to edit the name of that of my store, which in the past we've not been able to do that. Um, so that is a new feature. So please know that your feedback is certainly valuable to us. Um, our company always takes in that feedback and tries to make our system as user friendly for you as possible. Um, <clears throat> so again, we have the school store and my store. So the school store is going to be something that's set up <clears throat> from by administrators of your PBIS rewards. Um, and in there, you're going to find items that anyone in the school, any, any student in the school can purchase. <clears throat> okay, um, so that's going to be visible to all of your staff members. And all staff members can sell items from that school store. All right, your students can use their points to purchase items from the school store if that feature is turned on. Again, administrators can turn that feature off so that only they can do all they so that administration is handling all redemptions being made. Um, another feature we have here is my store. OK, now that my store is going to be visible only to the teacher. So if India creates a store um, in, for her classroom, um, Anna cannot use that store in her classroom. All right. So, again, that is that is a store that you're creating for your class and specific to your class. So you're only able to sell items from that store to your the kids in your class. Students can make these purchases from my store. Um, again, like I said, if that feature is turned on. So if that's not turned on at your school, please speak with administrators and see if you can get that turned on. Now let's talk about our school store setup. So guys, you have several different categories here um, and you, these, these categories are completely customizable, guys. So please feel free to arrange those categories as you see fit. The way we have this one done here is we have ex experiences there at the top, as you can see, it's highlighted in that with that red square. 
And then you can also pick, uh, put pictures there. As you can see, many of these items have a photo there to kind of help your students. That is especially helpful if you're dealing with lower level um, students. So like kindergarten, first, second grade, maybe those kids who are just learning the foundations of reading, those pictures come in handy to kind of help them decide where they want to spend their points and what to do with them. All right, you can also check out from this page um, and from the groups page in the redeem menu. All right, my store runs the same way as the school store, so it's not it's not it doesn't run any differently. It's all it all comes out the same way um, through that through the app or through your um, web portal. Now for the redeem queue, um, up in the upper right, uh, right hand corner, this is um, how the students are actually able to redeem all of the purchases that they actually have made. So on the left hand side, you go into the stores and you'll hit redeem. Okay. And once you hit redeem, it's going to ask you if you want to approve that purchase made by a student. So for example, Blake is in the store. He has purchased fancy pencils for Ms. Michael's classroom. So there, Ms. Michaels has the opportunity to decide, is it something that Blake wants right now, or is it something that he wants to redeem later? Um, if it is something that he wants right now, she can go ahead, select redeem now, and then approve that. The points will automatically be deducted from Blake's um, point total. And if she is keeping track of the inventory for that particular item, the, the quantity that is purchased by the student will actually go down for the number that is purchased. Now, let's say that Blake actually wanted to get some fancy pencils, but this is something that um, that Miss Michaels is not going to approve. She can hit the X button and deny that that purchase. Um, also, as I said, that this, this is something that, that can be redeemed later. So, for example, let's say Blake wanted to purchase a homework pass. He doesn't want to use it right then and there, but he wants to save it till next week when there's an assignment that he, yeah, he really ain't trying to do, um, to, and he's earned enough points for that homework pass. Ms. Michaels will just say redeem later and still approve it, and then she can go back in and redeem it at a later time. Now, let's say that you have a whole selection of points that need to be redeemed. One of the great features with the PBIS awards when it comes to the redeem queue is if you select where it says show all students, it will show all the students that need to have their um, purchases redeemed and approved. Let's say that you have over 20 students that need to have fancy pencils redeemed. Rather than hitting redeem every single time for each student, if you just hit select all, all the students will be selected and then you can hit redeem and all of those purchases will be, re be redeemed right then and there rather than individually going through. So that is a great way to just kind of speed up the process of getting those purchases redeemed, whether it's right now or even later in the redeem queue. All right, so let's switch up and start discussing our events. In this section, we're going to discuss how to use the three different types of events. So let's first look at the three different types of events we have here. So first, we have redeem, redeeming events. Okay, so these are events that are going to cost your students points to attend. So what that means is if I have a, let's say we're doing a movie on Friday and it's 20 points to come, that means that that will take 20 points from Terrell if he wants to register for that event. When he registers, if he has 40 points, it will take 20, 20 of his points to come to that, um, that movie, all right? Then we also have a qualifying event. A qualifying event does not take points points away from your students. Um, it just means that they have, they simply have to have that many points in order to attend or register for the event. And the last type of event we have here are award events. And these events are um, events that your students actually will get points for attending. So this is a really good idea if you're having a hard time getting parents out to parent teacher, to PTO, um, for a open house. Maybe if you're having an award program or some other function going on at school after hours, 
this, this is a good time, um, a good place where you can uh, reward your students for being, uh, being present and supporting the school. I also threw some links for you there in the chat bar um, in case you want more guidance on how to create a school event or how to create a, a my event. Realize that an event that you create on your own, um, there are going to be options so that you can make that visible for the whole school or you can just make that visible for yourself. So um, I, I like to make sure I remind you guys that if I want to do like a superhero theme in my classroom on Thursday, even though the whole school's not doing that, I can still create an event and do um, go about that much the same way. We wanted to give you some ideas, some event ideas that you can use at the different levels. I'm just going to briefly throw, go through a couple of these. So obviously, you know, at an elementary level, things like popcorn parties or family night or hat day, these might be things that your students really are looking forward to, bringing in a stuffed animal, kind of having a little show and tell kind of situation. And then some awarding events that you might would use would be, like I said, parent teacher meetings, um, maybe a sporting event that's taking place at the school or even going over some training um, on safety for your kids. Um, and that'd be, that'd be online safety or even on the bus. And then for our secondary students, you know, you, you obviously want to be very careful with, with your secondary students because they're not gonna like all the same things in elementary school. You know, uh, for example, at, at an elementary school, I remember working uh, at my school and we had like a sticker party one day. And that was a really big deal for kindergarten and first grade. They really wanted to be at that sticker party. That probably wouldn't be something that would work out too well at a secondary establishment, right? So let's uh, make sure that you're, you're really kind of feeding that for your kids. Survey your students to find out what kind of events they like. Survey your students to find out what they want to see in their school store. Um, a lot taken from that. So just some of these ideas that I want to just kind of put out there for you. Homework passes are very popular at the secondary level. Um, and so is uh, having off-campus lunch or having lunch delivered to campus. Also a really big features uh, for secondary. And admission into school events. That is, that is a, another um, very popular secondary event idea that you can take with you. Okay, our final way that students can redeem points is with raffles. And I have to say, this is my favorite. I really love raffles. Um, so let's talk about the two different types of raffles that, there, that we have, and they're very similar. You'll see the wording is the very uh, same. So those redeem raffles, those are basically like your traditional raffles where it costs points to enter into the raffle. So the same thing is we used to give out those paper tickets. If you remember where you have to tear them apart and try not to lose one, um, you know, which never happens, especially with little kids, they can never remember where anything is. So um, this gets rid of that issue completely. And then the other type is a qualifying raffle. Again, based on the points that they've earned. So it does not cost students anything. It's really based on their merit in the PBS reward system. So with these, we have lots of different ideas. And I think our favorite thing really about raffles is that you don't have to have a lot of prizes. There are so many things that get donated to schools, maybe one or two items, or you find something left over. And, um, you know, we find 10 pencils left over. What am I going to do with these? Or one old t-shirt that's some school swag. What are we going to do with that? Well, let's raffle it off. It's really easy. So Adam had a really great example. Do you want to talk to your Adam about your example with the hoverboard? Okay, so like how many of you guys uh, at the beginning of the school year, you get uh, some donations from the community or maybe from, you know, the Walmarts in your area. Uh, so one year we actually had a hoverboard uh, and was the first I was, an, I was an assistant principal. We got a hoverboard. And I remember when they sent, they sent me one hoverboard and we have 580 kids. And I'm sitting here thinking, what, in, what am I supposed to do with one hoverboard? Like, it just doesn't seem fair. I don't even want to show it to anyone. Because then, you know, of course, my kids are all going to be asking about this. But what was really cool about that is that we just kind of showcased that hoverboard all year and allowed the kids to have a drawing right around Christmas where they were able to um, kind of use their points. And they just purchased a lot of raffle tickets so that they could be entered into the raffle. And then one student was able to actually um, receive that hoverboard. So again, if you're getting stuff like that, raffles are great. It's a great place for you to um, allow your students, first of all, to use their points, because a lot of times that, you know, the 
end the year, those points are going to go away. So we want to make sure that the students are able to use their points. And, and this is a great way to kind of um, zero out those balances is by putting up raffles for things like a hoverboard or bigger items that you know your students would be interested in. Yes, thanks, Adam. That's perfect. No problem. Uh, and we just love, you know, even as a teacher, you know, sometimes we just find like one or two little things that we really like, we know our students would enjoy. And that is a great way to utilize raffles to give those things away to our students. And they can earn them utilizing their points or buy, purchase into the raffle either way. So a couple of good ideas that are here, but the options are really endless with raffles and the things that can be done with that. All right, Terrell, we're bringing it in the fourth quarter. We are bringing in the fourth quarter, but I do want to take a, a, a small time out um, because there was a question about the store. Um, please put it in the chat. What are some of the things that you actually have in your 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 stores, like in the teacher school stores? What are some of the things that you offer the students to purchase in your store? Or if you want to throw in some of the things that are part of your school store, what are some of the things that are actually in the school stores? I'm all about the engagement. Uh, I want, I want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to um, see what all different types of things you can have in the stores. Gotta love that homework pass. Oh, rolly chair for the day. Earbuds, India said that's always a big popular one where she was, water bottles. Oh, DJ, DJ for, for the day. Oh yeah. Um, I think, Anna, you said that one of the things that the students can purchase is that they are in charge of selecting the sound for the day. Uh, the point sound, yes. Point sound, yes. In yes. the PIS reward system, you can actually change the point sound. And what's the number one sound that wants to be selected, especially at the elementary level? Oh, come on. Somebody else can say it. Unmute yourself. What do you think the number one sound is? Amy says it. I saw it. I know she knows what it is. Come on, Amy Nichols, you know what it is. Is it fart noise? Of course. Yes. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, fidget. <laughs> yes, and there's other things that's in the store. We got fidget, snacks, swag, school supplies, juice, or pop. Um, I'm, I'm not for sure of everyone else um, in different states and different regions. I know especially here in my experience in Indiana, especially here in Indianapolis, one of the most requested items is Takis. Mm -hmm. All the students love, and it has, it can't be the regular flavor. It gotta be the hot Takis, uh -huh. hot Doritos, hot talk, just, just hotness everywhere. <laughs> they got those orange fingers. I'm like, stop, mm -mm, just, just stop. <laughs> Absolutely. Fuego Takis, yes. <laughs> Fuego Takis. Yes, Fuego. <laughs> yes. it's 100 correct though the messier they are the more they like them i, I really think that's the case <laughs> that is that is so <laughs> thank you everyone for putting in um and sharing what are in your um stores so we're going to start the fourth quarter with some of the interventions especially those um social emotional learning um and then the check-in check-out coach and also from the check-in check-out teacher india Right. Well, I think before we kind of talk it, talk about, you know, some of the tier two, tier three interventions, I think it would be great for us to talk about some of our social emotional learning. And um, I think the best person on the team, I just know he loves talking about social emotional learning is Adam. So Adam, do you mind telling us a little bit about our social emotional learning check-ins that can be done by staff and by students? Not at all. Okay, so guys, uh, social emotional learning is, is, is relatively new um, to, to PBIS rewards and relatively new to, to the, you know, the educational arena in general. Um, now, we've probably been doing a little bit with uh, social emotional learning here and there without calling it that, um, but now it officially has its name and there it is with sell. So I just want to show you that you can check your students in and kind of do a sell check on them every day. So the purpose of that sell check is let's say, uh, let's say Anna's in my class and I have Anna first period and then India has Anna second period. We can do that sell check just so Whenever I send, let's say Anna comes into class and she's had a hard day. I can already tell. I have a little conversation with 
she tells me that she's had a, a hard morning and she's lost her homework and she's just, she's already defeated for the day. So when I go in, I can mark that in her cell check. And then when she goes to India's class, India already sees that Anna started her day this way. So let's quickly review how we would do that. So again, you wanna first, you can look for a student or select a student from your group, which is pretty simple there. After you've done that, um, you always, will always see a little heart with the check in it. That is our icon for sale. Again, when you click on that, we would click on a student and click on sale check right there. And it's gonna give you some options. These are completely customizable for your school. You can change the wording here. Um, and so then you have calm, stressed and anger. There is also a sale guide available, which it kind of gives you an explanation, a little poster. You can post that in your in your classrooms, um, but it also give you a guide to kind of let you know how do I rate this student right now. Um, and then you also have some, uh, like for example, if you were to mark a student as an anger, like as angry, then that student is going to have um, that kind of goes in as a high priority, so that it, administrators can see that that student is angry, and it gives you some de-escalation strategies as well. So look, look right here. You have a student dashboard. From this student dashboard, you can see that this child was angry, and that it was documented here. It also goes and shows you. Uh, a history of their cell check-in, okay? All right, now India, I'm gonna turn it over to you because just like I'm big on sale, India is huge on check-in, check-out. Absolutely, you know, we have a lot of people that say, oh, I see how PBS rewards can definitely work for, you know, tier one, you know, students, everybody, that big 80% or so of your student body, it works for everyone. But we know there are those students who need more. They need a little bit more, maybe a lot more <laughs> as far as interventions are concerned to set them up for success. And so we do want you to know you can take care of your tier two and tier three. Um, intervention needs with PBIS rewards. And one of the greatest interventions that we have, I'm just gonna say an awesome feature for is check in, check out. Now, the way that it works within the system, we have things that your check in, check out coaches will be able to use, as well as things that teachers who have students with the check in, check out uh, plan in the system can use as well. Now, this is a feature that can be turned on or off within the system in settings by people with admin permissions, okay? So if it's not turned on, you don't even see those buttons as far as check in, check out teacher um, and coach. But if this is something you wanna use, which we suggest you do if you have students on a check in, check out plan, there are specific things for the check in, check out teacher and the coach. As far as the teacher is concerned, you don't need that piece of paper anymore that the student flushed down the toilet and got in the trash can. Somehow it ended up in their sandwich when they were eating at lunch. You don't have to worry about keeping track of that piece of paper anymore. You can put all of your ratings right within the PBIS reward system digitally from the staff app or the staff web portal. You simply will click on that check in, check out teacher button, and then you can search for your student on a plan by name as the teacher, or you can actually look for the student or students by clicking on the group or class that they're in that you actually teach. Once you've selected the correct student, you then can simply, I mean, with a few clicks, y'all, be able to give the rating for the day at that time for that student. Um, the, the, as far as the rating scale is concerned, that is set up by your admin and the settings, but you can say, you know what, Blake was on time today, kind of, just a little late, I'm going to give him a two, but he definitely was talking appropriately to adults today, so he earned a three in that. You can also add a comment, um, and then if you're not quite, you know, sure, or you don't remember what each of those number ratings mean, we have a little cheat sheet at the bottom just for you. And then once you've done your rating for that student, you simply just click submit. So honestly, with three to four clicks, you're able to do your teacher responsibility for that student's check-in, check-out plan for daily, weekly, monthly, or whatever time it's been set up for. And as we said, there's also a feature within PBS Rewards for your check-in, check-out coaches. Now, 
Like we said, there are settings that you can set up regarding check in, check out by clicking on settings in the left hand menu. And then once you do, this is where you can go in and click on check in, check out options, and then set up the things um, for people to utilize the system. Like we said, you can make it active or inactive. You can also then decide if you want your rating system for the teachers to be a one, two, three or a zero, one, two. We suggest one, two, three, because we feel like if the student's even trying on the plan, they should get a point for that. Then you can also make sure that you set up what are the, the goals as far as a list of goals that the check and checkout coaches will be able to choose from to make the plans for the students? The way, the reason we have kind of a set up list that you're going to create is so that you can get that consistent data. And if you don't remember any of that stuff and what it's supposed to do, once again, we got a cheat sheet for you right there on that right hand side that says check in, check out help. You can look there for some more help. And we also want you to, uh, if you would scroll down farther, you can see where we do have a section for you to set up uh, and identify who's going to be your check and check out coaches, and then choose one who is going to be the primary coach. The primary coach is that coach is going to be able to also change some of the settings within the system. And if you're not remembering what all the primary coach does, just click on that question button and it will give you a reminder. And once those settings have been set up, then your coaches will be able to go in, start plans for students and plans for students, and also check students in at the beginning of whatever their time frequency is, as well as check them out at the end of whatever their time frequency is. And like we said, that's kind of what it looks like for the coach. Once the, um, the coach kind of clicks on the check and check out coach button on that main menu, you can see there where they have those options of being able to start a new plan, look at all the plans that are already existing, as well as check a student in or check a student out. All right, Terrell is going to tell us about a new feature that we have. I mean, it was, it's really new as of like just maybe two, three weeks ago, um, how you can utilize our system for other tier two and tier three uh, reporting. Yes, um, but before we got, um, get into that, I do want to um, address a question that was put into the chat. Um, the question was, how do we have all students do a daily cell self check-in at the beginning of the day um, during the morning meeting? And Adam had a great response to that. I um, mean, I just want to make sure that everybody can hear this. If you want to do a cell check in for all students, just make it part of your classroom um, expectation or make, make it part of your classroom routine that every single morning that when, when students get in that first period of class, they do a cell check in right then and there. And then once students are able to are done with that cell check in, make sure they get rewards, uh, reward points for that. Um, just an easy way to make sure that it's something that wants to be done because if they can make the association, like if I do this expectation, if I follow this routine, I am going to get points. So that could be a great way to make sure that you make, make that into a daily routine, okay? Uh, now, as far as those tier two or tier three interventions, like I said, these are not the whole, this is not going to be the entire population. For the tier two, tier, tier three, you're only looking at between one to 10 percent of the student population depending on how how higher they, they need to go but the great thing about the pbis reward system that actually has um, been added like two weeks ago is that your tier two and tier three interventions documentation can be saved within the pbis system so once you um, have a student that needs to have an, an update with their uh, behavioral plan or anything like that what you will do um, on the student dashboard, and you can just simply click uh, on a student and where it says student dashboard, underneath interventions, interventions, where it says the, um, at the very far right hand with the drop down arrow, you will just click on that. And then a new button will come up to where you can add an intervention. So if you have like a therapy session that a student has to do or a new behavior, contract or behavior plan that needs to um, have the documentation put in there. This is something that you can do. Um, you can select which tier it's in, either it's tier two or tier three. Um, you can give it a description 
Um, you can also check on and off if that um, intervention is active or not. If you wanna uh, put a PDF um, file in there for that new behavior contract or whatever it is, you can add the file. And then it will also have the date on when that actually is going to go in. So you will click on the plus button and add intervention. It's going to give you that student's information. You can put the date of when that intervention is going to start. Is it tier two or tier three, where it says select the tier. And you can add in the description right there. If you have a file to attach, you can attach the file and then you will hit submit. And that information is there to be stored. And if you need to take that to um, different meetings with the student, um, or even a meeting with your like a behavior specialist for the student, or even you might need to use that for a parent teacher conference for those students, you could easily um, just print those files because they're actually saved in the PBIS award system. All right, everybody, we have made it. It's the post game. The game plan has been executed perfectly. Now it's time to wrap it up. And I, as we as talk about the, those post-game interviews, it's always funny when you see professional athletes get the microphone right in their face as they're like, oh, yeah, I did this. And it was awesome. So luckily, we're no, luckily we don't have to do that. But it is time for the post-game wrap-up. So the very first thing with our post-game wrap-up, Adam is going to talk about the show me how. All right, everybody. So um you're going to hear me say a lot of things I love about our program because there's a lot of things in our program that I absolutely adore. Um, and I've, I've actually had a wonderful opportunity to use PBIS rewards as an educator and an administrator in a school. So I certainly, I certainly get all of that. Um, so one of the coolest features we have on our site is something called Show Me How. And where that's located at the bottom right hand corner of your uh, web portal. So if you were, let's say we went through all of this stuff today and you want to, you, you don't remember how to create your own store. You can click there and from there it's going to give me, uh, it's going to let me type in um, some information. It's also going to give you some drop downs. So like store is one, sale is one, raffles, all of these things are there. These main topics that we went over today are all listed there and you can click and it'll take you through again with step-by-step -step instructions as what to do. So let's say I wanted to, if I typed in a sale check-in, it would literally tell me exactly where to click on the left-hand side and it would walk me through creating that. So I'm a really big fan, a big proponent of that show me how feature. Also, um, you will see there that there is a help button at the top right corner. When you click on that help button, it'll take you to our support page, which you'll see on the next slide. There's also something available here, this news and notes. So anytime we have a new feature or um, something of that along those lines, that will always populate right there for you to let you know what's changed and to kind of give you some insight into what's happening and with PBIS rewards on our end. <laughs> All right, so the next place that I, as I said, if you clicked up at the top right hand side, up at the top right hand side, it would take you to our support page, okay? From that support page, and thank you, India, for throwing that in the chat for everyone. Um, in that support page, guys, there's uh, one, of the, one of the places you can click there, it says videos. Um, and when you click on videos, it'll show you all the videos that we put together um, that, that details exactly how you can use the features in our system. Another part here um, you will see is the learn. When you click on learn, it's gonna open up these series of planets. Now those planets are separated into different phases, phase one and phase two. So your more primary, um, your more, more primary features that everyone's using, like how to use the groups page or redeeming or rewarding, those are gonna be as aspects that you find in phase one. Phase two are gonna, is gonna be more advanced features like check in, check out, how to utilize that sale, the ARS configuration. All of that stuff would be in phase two of that support page. Another really cool thing that you have available to you here 
Um, if you if you look on the bottom right hand uh, side of your screen, it'll, there's a, a little button there that says chat with someone or chat with support. If you click there, that'll open up a conversation with you and someone on our support team. If you have never had any, um, if you never had any greetings with them or any interactions with them, I have to tell you that the support people that we have with PBIS Rewards are amazing. I can't say enough about them. Um, I, anytime I've ever been stuck, they're right there to help me out. Um, and, and, I, and I've seen a lot of feedback from other people talking about the amount of work they do and how quickly they resolve um, issues for our clients. So by all means, guys, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to our support staff. Um, and they are, they definitely are educated and can help you with uh, figuring out what's going on. And also, if, uh, if you can't get a hold of the uh, support staff, we actually have a lot more training. Um, definitely, you should check out our training calendar at pbisrewards.com backslash training backslash calendar. Um, one of the things that we offer, this is totally free. We actually have office hours. So if you want more of that one-on-one -on -one aspect to finally go through one of the things that we talked about, or you just need... Um, someone to listen to some of the ideas that you may have for your school, you can register for a 20 minute um, session with the PBIS war team. You usually get all of us. Sometimes it might be two, but we're definitely here to answer any of the questions that you have, give you any advice um, and just help you grow each and every day using this. And we do our office hours twice a month. Our next office hours is, is going to be on August 11th. But at any time, you can definitely go ahead and reach out to us. Um, once again, we are here to help you guys out. Um, even if it's something that if your school, I know with COVID, if your school is allowing visitors to come into the school, please let us know. And we'll come to you and, and train the staff even more if that is something that is needed in your, in your district or in your school. So um, one of the most exciting things that we've started this year also is our Facebook user group. And we have grown very quickly in this group. We are teetering right around 900 members and we're looking to bust through to have a thousand members um, by the end of this month. And so we would love for you to join us there. This is where we take new ideas and get some feedback from you. This is also where lots of educators that are using PBS Rewards get additional ideas. I think between yesterday and today, and maybe there are like four or five questions that were asked and then lots of answers from different people. So this is a great way to interact with those other people that are utilizing PBIS rewards and just get ideas right in that social media place where you're already checking things out. So we would love for you to join us there in the PBIS rewards break room. All right, sorry you all was getting so excited about the chat. You all are just blowing it up with great questions and, and great resources, but guess what? This is what you've been waiting for. This right here is the kit and the caboodle. It is all of the resources for really all of the trainings that we have on our training calendar, okay? So if there were some other ones you missed, guess what? You can go on there and get the resources, get the recordings, get everything that you need. Now it's gonna take us a little time to get everything from today uploaded to this resource link, but you will also see all of the information that you've asked us about today from today's session on this link as well. So we're getting ready to put in the chat the bit.link or the bit.ly link for you that is all your resources in one click, okay? So you can click on it from the chat or you can also use your mobile device and scan the QR code. You are going to want to bookmark this particular page because it truly is the mother load, the kid and caboodle of all of our resources for all of our trainings on the calendar. And now for the biggest event of the season, um, here we have for you guys uh, a playbook that we put together for you just to kind of detail exactly what you need to do at the beginning of the year. Um, guys, and I'm, I'm putting a, I'm gonna put a, the link there for you in the chat as well. Guys, this playbook goes through 
every component of PBIS and PBIS rewards to kind of give you a breakdown of exactly what needs to be done. It gives you step-by-step -step instructions of what you should be considering. Um, it even goes into giving you some supports and I'll, um, I'll uh, shows you where our free ebooks are located. So guys, I highly encourage you. I mean, we, we worked very hard on this playbook for you this year. We really wanted to give you something that, as India has said, is going to set you up to win this year. Um, and I'm, and I, we can almost promise you, if you go through that playbook, you will set yourself up and set your school up to be, uh, to be winners this year. Okay, we really hope that you guys enjoy that. And um, we are really happy with how it turned out and everything. So please utilize that with your staff and um, we will have all those resources ready to go for you. All right, Terrell, bring us home. All right, time to bring us home. It is now the end of our game plan. We wanna say thank you so much for joining us on our kickoff for 2021 with the PBIS awards and the training camp. We all hope that hope that you guys are really ready for this. Um, and we ha are happy that you have enjoyed the football theme. Little side note, the NFL schedule starts on Thursday, I believe. It's preseason. I know we probably won't watch the preseason, but we know that it's, it's almost upon us and then we can get back to our football Sundays. I know I'm excited about it. So uh, sometimes I have, you know, back in when I was in the classroom, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I watch that late football game and didn't do the lesson plans, but it's okay. All right. But we do want to say thank you to everyone. Um, all the resources are going to be given out. Um, please, please, please complete the survey that we actually have. Please take a picture of our QR code. Let us know exactly how we have done and how we can get better so we can execute this game plan again in the future. So if you have any other questions, don't hesitate to reach out at training at pbisawards.com. That is our trainer's email. We will all see it. And we are very quick at getting back to any of those questions that, are, that need to be answered. So once again, on behalf of all of us here at the PBIS Awards team, thank you so much. We hope you all have a fantastic day. And we want to say um, we hope that you all have a fantastic school year later thanks everybody thank you and if you want us we will be on for a couple minutes after this for any questions to be answered um so we're here for you thanks everyone have a great school year have a thank great you guys year. good luck this year i hope you have a good good time kicking off your pbis program this year yes and please email us some of those touchdowns and wins please let us know so email us at training at pbsawards.com We'd love to hear about all of your victories and successes this year. Thanks a lot, everyone. Good job, everybody. <laughs> Shay, if you can, stay on. We'll help you out. And Terrell, do you want to hit stop on the recording?